Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Yeshua, we thank you for the life that you have given us. We thank you that you've put your spirit in us. We thank you that your grace and your mercy are new every morning. We thank you that in you we can have the fullness of life and every true blessing. But Lord, help us to walk according to your word. Help us to walk according to your ways. So we don't go to the right or to the left. So we don't pick up curse instead of blessing. So Lord, help us today to choose blessing. Put this word in our hearts and make it alive to us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. This week we are in Ki Tavo. Ki Tavo. We are very, very close now, almost to the very end, only a couple weeks left, and the fall feasts are even closer. And so this week, Ki Tavo means when you enter, when you enter the land. Can you imagine how exciting would it have been for that generation? That, you know, for 40 years, when you enter the land, yes, but not this year, then Oh, when you enter the land, yes, but not this decade. Oh, when you enter the land, oh, when are we going to enter the land? But now, it's the generation that is going to enter the land. How important were these words when they go to enter into the land? And can you imagine the same when the people were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, God, save us, that they were actually looking at the Lamb of God right there. They they heard the words when John said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But they yet could not fully comprehend. And yet the disciples did, but they didn't, and they did, and they didn't, until like they were beholding a time and a generation. And, you know, every generation, we don't know when Yeshua is going to return. But if it is in our day, if it is in our time, and we're at that precipice of entering into the great promised land of promised lands. Are we as ready? And since we haven't yet, and we're still on this earth, we need to see what can we learn from the Torah about the spiritual reality of our actions and our choices when we've been entered into a covenant with God, when we said, yes, we are part of your covenant. What does all this mean? And Chapter 26 this week is uh, chapter 26, verse 1 through 29, verse 8. And in the first verse, it says, When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance, and you've taken possession of it and live in it. Now, this is a very important command, because when we look at this, we realize that this is speaking to a greater future, a certainty. God is bringing you into the land. You will enter the land. You will conquer the land. You will possess the land. You will then begin to live in the land. You're going to have another generation. You're going to have vineyards. You're going to have sheep and, and, and uh, many herds and flocks. And, and there's going to be a future. You're going to build cities and expand cities and build new cities and, and and, and, and there's this, this hope about what is to come. But now it turns a little serious. In verse 16, it says, This day the Lord your God commands you to do these statutes and rules. You shall therefore be careful to do them with all of your heart and with all of your soul. And we're going to start to see this again and again. This is so important. Jesus dealt with it. Jesus spoke about this. That it's not just with the head. It's not just with the heart. It's not just with the spirit. It's not just uh, the physical doing, doing. That there's a wholeness, a oneness that God wants. That you can't say, okay, I'm serving you with my body. And yet my heart is somewhere else. Oh, I'm serving you with my heart, but my mind is somewhere else. That God is the Lord of all of who we are and the fullness of who we are. And so we need to walk according to his ways. And the Lord has declared today that you are a people 
for his treasured possession. I love that in Hebrew, it's the Am Sogula, my treasured people, my special treasure. As he has promised you, and that you are to keep all of his commandments. See, so remember, like with your heart, you're the special treasure. Like he's giving the identity. It's not just an authoritative command. It's a relational command. And that he will set you in, it's that he will set you in praise and in fame and in honor high above all nations that he has made. And that you shall be a people holy to the Lord your God as he promised. Such a blessing and a promise to Israel. Such a blessing and a promise to his people. And that same praise, that same honor, that same glory is, is, is available to all the people of God because he did it for Israel, because he still does it for Israel, because he does it to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. There is no favoritism in God. Do you want that? Do you want the praise of God? Do you want the greatest blessing? Do you want to be his treasured people? Do you want to be his honored, his, his lifted up? Do you want his glory reflecting in your life? Do you want the nations to say, that person must be a follower of God because of look of who they are and all that they've accomplished? And if you say yes, like Israel said yes, you move into chapter 27 and you're like, oh, oh. Because remember, he talked just recently about you don't have to make a vow. Don't make a vow. Don't make a vow. But if you do make a vow to God, you're going to have to live it out. Well, this was even stronger than a vow. They were reiterating a covenantal promise. And, and, and Moses, and through God's inspiration, said there's two mountains that are like two giant standing stones as you enter the promised land. One is Mount Gerizim and the other is Mount Ebal. One to the right and one to the left. One is for a place of honor and blessing. One is a place for dishonor and for curse. And he divides up the tribes. And if you look at how he divides up the tribes, you'll see some interesting correlations between those who went to the dishonor versus those who went to the mountain of blessing. Even in that, it seemed it was a bit prophetic. And they, they began to declare if anyone does this, if anyone does this, if anyone does this, if anyone does this, the Lord will do this. This will come. This will happen. The people are, Amen. God is the faithful and truthful king. Amen. God is the faithful and truthful king. It's just the preamble of establishing. So imagine we've got the witnesses on the Mount of Blessing. We're going to have witnesses on the Mount of Curse. The children of Israel are going to be in between these two mountains. And these two mountains to this day are still witnesses that Israel must follow the Torah of God to this day. Chapter 28. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all of his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Can you almost hear the words of Yeshua? This commandment that I give you today, to love your neighbor as yourself, to love your enemy as I have loved you, to love one another and be in unity. He gave us such strong commandments as well. He, all of these other commandments are assumed. All this other, Israel was already part of this covenant. They already had agreed to these things that we're going to read today. But then Yeshua elevates it to even higher to love your enemy and to love one another. And that the world will know you by your love. Ask the Holy Spirit right now as you go through this to highlight things in your own heart and your own life. And then you can begin to see, are you operating out of the place of blessing? Or are you operating out of the place of curse? And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb. 
and the fruit of the ground and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessings on you in your barns and in all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and that she, they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity in the fruit of your womb and in the fruit of your livestock and in the fruit of your ground within the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens to give you rain to your land in its season and to bless the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head of and not the tail, and you shall only go out and not down. And if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, being careful to do them, and if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods and to serve them. This is the guaranteed blessing of God if you follow his principles. Teacher of the law came to Yeshua and he said, what is the greatest commandment? And Yeshua asked him, what is your understanding? He said, to love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor as yourself. And Yeshua said, if you do those, you will fulfill the fullness of the Torah. And yet, why is love the most difficult thing to do? Why is broken relationship, betrayal, hurt, compromise so easy to do? If we love, we will fulfill. But when we're self-centered, self-serving, self-focused, when we look upon others instead of the Lord, when we seek after treasure instead of his kingdom, these blessings begin to fall through our fingertips. I'm not going to read through all the curses. There are many. The curse passage is much longer than the blessing passage. He's more specific. But if you go through that now and ask yourself, do you have more of the curses in your life or more of the blessings in your life? If you look at your nation, can you see more of the curses in your nation or more of the blessings in your nation. And I think Israel is a perfect example because there are more believers in Israel today than maybe any other time in history. And now believers are in every part of the land. And so it's not like when Abraham was going after um, Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah and he's, if I can just find 10 righteous people, will you spare? And he couldn't find even 10, including Lot. That's not the case today. So we can see blessings because there are followers of Yeshua who are loving the Lord, who are loving their enemy, who are loving each other, who are expressing these things, but yet the majority are not. And so we have things like October 7th and then war and more war. And then we've got those who are now standing for Israel because there's a remnant in Israel that is, that is still holding onto the covenant. But yet many of the nations are just cursing Israel. And some of that is the Antichrist spirit that he wants God to be unfaithful to his covenant that he made to Abraham. And he wants to try to make Yeshua unfaithful to his covenant that he's made with us in the new covenant. The two one-sided covenants that God did. But yet, he's failing. 
And we know how it's going to end. A worldwide revival, a greater outpouring of the Spirit. Of course there's going to be a plague, and of course there's still going to be curses, and we're going to see it, but there are going to be those who are walking according to His ways, who are going to be the light and the voice in these end times. They're going to see, look, I am still the blessed of the Lord. And yes, they will get jealous. Yes, they will persecute. Yes, the, that spirit of the Antichrist will rise up. The Cain and the Abel will rise up again. The, the Jacob and the Esau, the Isaac and the Ishmael, they, they'll continue to rise up because it's a clash of what? Are you willing to love and be humble? Or are you willing to be proud and hate? Those are the questions that we have. Those are the questions that the Torah leaves us with. And Yeshua is alive. And he bears witness to all of these things. And we no longer need a mediator like Moses, for Yeshua himself is our mediator. He has given us his Holy Spirit. His Spirit is in this earth. And just like Mount Ger um, Gerizim, and Mount Ebal, which are still in Israel. We know exactly where they are. They're remnants of, these, of the altars upon these mountains, even to this day. They still bear witness to these things that they said to do. What is going to be in your heart today? What are you going to decide today? The great thing about God is, as soon as we begin to even just turn our hearts to Him, He is there. As soon as we begin to confess our sin to him, it's because he's already forgiven us. We need to be that example of the grace and the mercy that he's given to us, to others. We need to stop seeing there should be less curse and more blessing. In chapter 29, verse 1, these are the words of the covenant that the Lord commanded Moses to make with the people of Israel in the land of Moab, besides the covenant that he made with them at Horeb. And Yeshua made a covenant with us when he died upon the cross and he rose from the grave. And it's the covenant that the world and all creation, whether demonic or man, nobody could understand what that was going to be. But now we have it. We have the blessing of God. Will you commit your heart today to grab a hold of that tree of life, to return to these blessings and these promises? We need to see the Spirit of God be released in Korea in our families, and in your nations, wherever you are. We need to see it in Israel so badly. Let us not focus upon the curses, but focus on how we can obtain the blessings, how we can repent and begin to move in the ways of God again. And therefore, the mountain of Gerizim will bear witness. Yeshua, through the Holy Spirit, will bear witness and we shall see life in fullness again. So Yeshua, I pray that you would make the reality of your blessings known in our lives. Holy Spirit, convict us of our hearts and our sin, that we would cease to walk in the way of the curses and once again return to the path of life and blessing forevermore. We thank you that it's never too late. We thank you so much that today we can say, we choose life. We choose Yeshua. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen.